Hello and welcome to the hands-on session of LED blinking. In this session, we'll learn how to write code for blinking the onboard LED. Let's open CubeMX. Click on access to board selector. Type the name of your target board that is Nucleo F401RE. So this is our target board. You can directly double click on this board or you can just click on start project. Once you click the start project, a pop-up window will ask to initialize all peripheral with their default mode. Click yes. So this is the pinout and configuration wizard opens in front of us. This is the MCU that is STM32F401RE. LQFP is the package with 64 pins. Now you can see that the MCU is initialized with the default mode as we have clicked yes. So we can clear the pinouts from this drop down menu. Click on pinout. Select clear pinouts. Click yes. And all the pinouts will be cleared. Now we need to enable a GPIO pin for our LED blink project. So the first of all we need to see on which pin the LED is connected on board. For that we need to go for the user manual. You can download it from the official website. This is the user manual. If you scroll down in the content section there will be a point LEDs. If you click on this you will be redirected to the particular page. Here you will find there is a user LED labeled as LD2 which is a green LED connected to Arduino signal D13 corresponding to STM32 input output PA5. That means the green user LED is connected to PA5 pin. So come back to the pinout wizard and look for PA5. You can directly search here for the pin PA. So as you can see the pin is flashing. Click on the pin and you will see a number of options available to you. This single pin can function in many ways because in this MCO each pin is multiplexed with different peripherals. So depending upon your configuration a single pin can perform multiple functions. For now we are enabling it as GPIO output. So as soon as we enabled it the color of the pin changes to green which indicates that pin is configured successfully. Now you can rename it right click on this pin click on enter user label and you can mention the label you want. I am labeling it as green LED. Hit enter and the name will be changed. Click on A to Z tab and you will see the list of peripherals. So we have enabled the GPIO. Next thing that we need to enable is RCC that is reset and clock control. When you click this peripheral a window will appear in the sidewise. So there are two source of clock. One is high speed external and another is low speed external. So just select HSE as bypass clock source and you can see these two pins are enabled for clock input. Now if you click on GPIO peripheral then you will find the configuration option for the pins that is configured as we have configured PA5 so it is in the list. Click on this pin PA5 and you will see the additional configuration parameter below such as GPIO output level which is low that means by default the LED will be off. Next is GPIO mode that is push pull or open drain. In the previous lecture we have already discussed what is push pull and open drain. Next is pull up and pull down. You can configure the pull up pull down to this particular pin. Next is maximum output speed. There is a variety of speeds available. Right now it's working at low speed frequency. User label as we have labeled it as green LED. So that's all for the configuration part because we are just creating a project for LED blink. So there is nothing much to enable. Go to clock configuration. The clock is automatically configured for HSE but we need to select the source by using this option button. Once you click the option button you will see the desired frequency of system changes. The maximum clock frequency that it can operate with is 84 megahertz. So you can directly 84 and hit enter and the clock issues will be automatically resolved. So I am configuring the clock to operate at maximum frequency. Next is project manager tab in which we need to give the name of the project. I'm giving it as LED underscore blink. Next is project location. The desired location in your system drive where you would like to save this project. You can click on browse and select the particular drive as we have already discussed in CubeMX session. Application structure. Leave it as basic. Next is toolchain ID. 
So in our case, we are going to use STM32 cube ID. Now there is one option generate under root, which is checked. This options create a separate folder in which the code structure is generated for particular toolchain ID. If you uncheck this, then the main project folder will contain all the source and headers file. But if you check this option, then the source and header file will be created as a separate folder within the main project folder. So it's good to create, it's good to generate under root. Linker setting, keep it as default. Next is firmware packages that is already selected as we have added in CubeMX. Code generator and advanced setting, we do not need to change anything. So you can directly go to generate code. As you click on generate code, it start generating the user source code. Once the source code is generated, click on open project. Once you click on open project, the project will be open in STM32 cube ID. So as you can see, the project is successfully generated in cube ID. This is the folder structure having various files and folders as we have already discussed. So we need to go directly to main.c in the SRC folder. Double click on main.c and this is the source code in which we need to add our code. So in order to write a signal level to the GPIO pin, we need some drivers and functions associated with GPIO. And for that drivers, we can go drivers folder, HAL driver, go to include folder and look for GPIO.h. This is a particular file just double click to open it contains various functions and macros defined for gpio if you scroll down further you will find the input output operation function as you can see these are the functions so the very first is hal underscore gpio underscore read pin so as the name of the function itself described for reading the pin we will be going to use hal gpio write pin so just copy this function go to main.c and you can see there are some section marked as user code user code begin include and include so wherever this section is present you have to write in between this section so this is user code begin and end section related to includes like if you want to include your customized header file then you need to write it here similarly this is the section for private type definition similarly if you go scrolling down you will find the main function so this is the main function and within the main function there are few functions already called the very first is HAL initialization that is for resetting all the peripherals next is system clock configuration and after that GPIO initialization so after all the initialization we need to add our code so that we have two options whether to write in user code begin 2 or in user code begin 3 depending upon the situation like if you want to execute your code only once then you need to add the code at this level and if you want to execute your code infinite number of time then you need to add within this while so this is the section for the while loop user code begin and end so you can paste the function here as you can see this function has few parameters the very first is gpio x that means which gpio port i am using so as we have enabled pa5 so it denotes gpio port a so you can write gpio a and delete this definition type similarly remove this data type and write the pin name so we have labeled the pin as green underscore led so this is the green led pin next is gpio pin state that means what 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 is the state that we need to write to that pin so i would like to send high state so for high state we need to write gpio underscore pin underscore set all in capital you can add comment because adding comment will help you in future to understand that what this line particularly do in your code so this function is used for writing high logic next we need to add a delay because in order to create blinking effect we need to send a high and after a delay send it low signal so st driver offer a inbuilt delay function that we can use directly which is hal underscore delay and in the parameter it will take the millisecond i'm adding say of 500 millisecond you can copy the same line paste it again now we have write a high logic to this pin and after a delay we need to set the low logic for low logic we need to write reset in place of set so we are done with the coding section now go to project click on build all this will compile your code and the build result will be shown here in console window so the build finished with zero error and zero warning that means the code compiled 
successfully. Now we will take the target board and a USB A to mini B cable and connect it to your system. Now go to run, select debug as and click on STM32 Cortex M C C++ application. A new pop-up window opens to edit the configuration. Just click on debugger tab and verify whether the debug probe is ST-Link or not. If it is ST-Link, click apply then OK. Once clicking OK, the code will be downloaded to the target board. Once the code is successfully downloaded to the target board, you can click this resume button. This button is used to run the code. So I'm clicking this and as soon as I clicked on run button, you can see the green LED started blinking with a rate of 500 milliseconds. So we have successfully created a project for LED blink and see its simulation result on the hardware. That's all for this session. See you in the next one. Thank you.